What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and in this video we're going to do another example with two sample hypothesis testing. So a company wants to test if a promotion was effective and if the same customers increase spending. A sample of customers was taken below with their pre and post promotion spending given using a paired t-test at a 5% significance level. Is there evidence that the promotion worked? So first thing I want to mention before getting into this example is that we're going to be doing a paired t-test. And if you remember from the overview video, when I first started talking about two sample hypothesis testing, we split up the two samples into two groups. So we had either independent samples or we had dependent. samples. And the independent samples, we already went through a bunch of examples for that. So we did the Z test, we did the pooled variance test, non-pooled variance uh, T test. We also did the F test, right? Testing for the variances. And that was all under this category. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be working with dependent samples. And if you remember from the overview video, if samples are dependent, we're going to be doing a paired T test. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So for this specific example, how do you know that these two samples here are dependent? Well, notice that they're linked by the same customer. So if you remember, dependent samples always have to be linked by something. In this case, these two are linked by the same customer. So we have customer one, and then we have their pre-promotion spending, post-promotion spending, right? Then customer two, pre-promo spending, post promo spending. So when you're working with dependent samples, you're always going to have the same number of observations in each. So when we were working with independent samples, sometimes you could have different sample sizes. When you're working with dependent samples, these sample sizes are always going to be the same because there always has to be a link between the two. And when we're doing a paired t-test, basically what we want to do is we want to take these two samples and convert it to one sample. That's the way I like to think about it. And the way we do that is we take differences between the observations. So if we take the, pros, uh, the post promo spending minus the pre promo spending for all of these observations, for all these customers, so 92 minus 84, that would be $8. 72 minus 74 would be negative 2, 93 minus 91, 2, 41 minus uh, 34, that gives us 7, 49 minus 52, that gives us negative 3, 78 minus 62, that gives us 16, 81 minus 83 gives us negative 2, and then 88 minus 78, that gives us 10. And now what we're going to be doing is just working with this column over here, right? So we took the two samples and then sort of converted it to one sample by taking a difference. So notice what we're testing for in this example. We're testing whether the promotion worked. And if the promotion worked, then that means that the post promo spending should be greater than the pre promo spending. Right? But how can we say that in terms of this differences column that we took? Well, if this column should be greater than this one, that's what we're checking for, if there's enough evidence showing that, and we took this column minus this one to get this, then if you think about it, what we're testing for is if these differences are greater than zero. Right, Because if we take this minus that, so if we take like x minus y, for example, and we uh, our hypothesis, or we're trying to see if this is greater than that, then the difference between these should be greater than zero. Right? We could have also went the other way. So we could have took this column, right, the pre-promo spending, and subtracted this one. And if the promotion worked then, then we'd be testing if the differences are negative, right? Because this should be smaller than this, right? If this number is smaller than y, 
then this whole thing should be negative. So that's what we'll be testing for. But because we took this column minus this one, we're testing for whether those differences are positive. And so the null hypothesis would be the opposite of that, which would be less than or equal to zero. So notice here we're working with a one-tailed test, and more specifically a right-tailed test, because we have this greater than sign. Um, now you can also be working with left-tailed tests, like the example I just said. If we took this column minus that one, it would be a left-tailed one, because this would be less than zero. You can also work with two-tailed tests when you're working with dependent samples or a pair T tests. Uh, so let's say this question instead was saying, are there differences in the spending, maybe between one year and the next year? Then we're not too concerned with a particular direction there, right? If they're different, they can be different to the left side or to the right side. So then the alternative hypothesis, we'd be testing, are those differences just not equal to zero? Right? Because if they're the same, if they haven't changed, then if we subtract them, then they should be very close to zero. Right? But if they're different, then those differences are just not going to equal zero. So that would be a two-tailed test. So you could also run into questions like that. So just be aware of that. Uh, but in this specific question, we are working with a right-tailed test. And so now what happens is we're just doing a one-sample T tests, right? And notice that we are given a list, right? So we're not given the information about the uh, sample. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out what is that X bar and then also what is that S bar. So that sample mean, that sample standard deviation. We also need the N value. And notice that there's eight observations, right? Sample size is eight. And these here, I'm not going to do the calculation in this video, but if you were to find the average of these, it would be 4.5. And the sample standard deviation would be 6.845. If you were to find the mean, right, and then take the differences between these observations and the mean, square them, divide them by n minus 1, gives you the variance, square root that and then you'd get the sample standard deviation. Now, if you're using the stats calculator, you don't necessarily have to get these. I'm getting these because I'm gonna show you how to do it manually, but if you are using the stats calculator, you really just have to input this list, and I'm gonna do that at the end of the video. So, just regular hypothesis testing, what's the next step? It's a right tail test, so let's draw a diagram of what we're working with. We're going to be working with the T distribution, right? It's a pair T test, and it's a right-tailed, and the significance level is 5%. And so that means that there's only one critical value. So this area over here is 5%. This is where we're going to reject that null hypothesis. This is where we're going to accept the null. So if the promotion worked, it means that we are rejecting that null, that the differences are less than or equal to zero. That means there's going to be evidence pointing towards the differences being positive. And as I mentioned before, when the differences are positive, it means in this specific example, the promotion worked. So what we got to do now is we need to find out what is this critical value going to be. So we got to look it up in a t distribution and remember there's multiple t distributions and they depend on the degrees of freedom degrees of freedom and minus one right so eight minus one so we know we're going to be working with the degrees of freedom of seven so you can look up that critical value in the table you can also use a calculator so stat f5 distribution t distribution inverse t data would be variable Remember this area, always the right-tailed area, degrees of freedom, is uh, 7. And when you do that, you'd end up getting approximately 1.895 for that critical value, whether you look it up in the table or if you do it on the calculator. So this is 1.895. That's the critical value. 
And then we have to find the test statistic. And if you remember for t test for one sample, this is the formula over here. So we got x bar minus mu. So notice x bar is 4.5. And what's mu? That's this value over here. So it's just zero. That's the hypothesized value. Um, over sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Sample standard deviation, 6.845 divided by the square root of 8, which would give us 1.86 approximately. Okay, so where does 1.86 fall on the graph? It falls right here, right to the left of 1.895. And so notice that it's in that acceptance region. And so the conclusion is that we fail to reject the null. And in this particular example, what it means is that there is not enough evidence the promotion work. Now, one thing I want to mention about the pair T test is sometimes in textbooks, this test statistic, there will be like different letters here. So maybe you'll have like D bar, right, which would be the sample mean of the differences, right? Basically just other sort of notation, but the formula is still the same, right? I'm just using notation that we've used before just because I feel like you'd be more comfortable at this point using that same notation that you're used to. But uh, just notice that sometimes this might be different letters, different notation, but the formula is still exactly the same. And if you were to do this whole test with the uh, calculator, you'd go to stat, you would input a list. The list you would input is this sample of differences over here. And then you would go F3 for tests, F2 we're doing a t-test, and we're doing a one sample test, right? We converted those two samples into one sample. And then the data would be, uh, we're looking at a list. Um, this here would be this sign for the alternative hypothesis. So it'd be greater than mu zero. The uh, mu zero would be zero in this case. List, uh, assuming you input it into list one, and then frequency would be one. And then you would execute that. And then um, the two outputs you wanna look at is the test statistic, which would be 1.86. You should get the same thing. And then the p-value would be 0 0.0526. Okay, so 1.86, notice it's here compared to the critical value, or you could just take the p-value compared to the significance level of 5%. Notice that that p-value is greater than the significance level, so we fail to reject the null whenever that happens. So either way, we uh, got that same uh, conclusion with multiple methods. So the conclusion of all of this is that there is not enough evidence that the promotion worked. So when you're working with uh, dependent samples, they ask you to do a pair t-test. You're taking those two samples, converting it to one, and the way you convert it to one is with differences. And then depending on the question, sometimes like in this question, you'll be asked to test towards a particular direction. So the diff we're testing if the differences are greater than zero. Sometimes you'll be testing if they're less than zero. And if you're doing a uh, two-tailed test, then you'd be testing if they're just not equal to zero. So just be aware of the types of questions that they ask you.